Good morning, it's already the 20th day of May and welcome to the Thoughts for the Day. And today we begin with the scripture from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. To read the Bible in a year today, we need to move on through 1 Chronicles chapters 10, 11 and 12 and John chapter 6 verses 45 to 71. The thoughts for the day to help you through the day. God answers prayers because he has promised he would, not because you make promises to him. It's unwise to be too sure of one's own wisdom. It is healthy to be reminded that the strongest might weaken and the weakest, wisest might err. God owes us nothing but gives us everything. The motivational thought for today, God takes life's broken pieces, P-I-E-C-E-S, and gives us his unbroken piece, P-E-A-C-E. On this day, in 1498, explorer Vasco da Gama arrived at Calicut, southern India, after discovering a route from the Atlantic via the southern tip of Africa. In 1830, D. Hyde, H-Y-D-E, patents the fountain pen. I don't know whether he's the other half of D. Jekyll. In 1873, Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis patent the first blue jeans with copper rivets. In 1927, at 7.40 a.m., Charles Lindbergh took off from New York to cross the Atlantic for Paris aboard the Spirit of St. Louis was the first non-stop air flight across the Atlantic. And in 1932, Amelia Earhart left Newfoundland on her journey to become the first woman to fly solo and non-stop across the Atlantic. In 1941, in World War II, German paratroopers invaded the Mediterranean island of Crete, the first airborne invasion of a country ever attempted. And in 2006, the Three Gorges Dam in China is officially opened. The personal story of the day, guilt is not my problem now. And the scripture comes from Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. And there are some other references from 1 John chapter 3 verses 19 to 24. The scripture says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Psychologists sometimes distinguish between false and real guilt. Real guilt is feeling remorse when one has actually done something wrong. For example, if a business person knowingly sells an inferior product to an unsuspecting client, then that business person should be bothered. False guilt, however, is feeling badly when one has not done something wrong or continuing to feel badly after the issue has been dealt with. Many Christians approach God with a continual sense of condemnation or a guilty conscience. That isn't right and it's not what God is offering. The Bible repeatedly stresses that we must confess our sins before the Lord. In fact, 1 John contains some of the clearest teaching on this in 1 John chapter 1 verses 7 and 9. But the Bible also clearly teaches that God forgives confessed sins. We are to stand confidently before him because we have been washed clean in the blood of Jesus Christ. Even though Satan continues to whisper accusations, we rest confidently on Jesus' righteousness And do not shrink away in shame, nor responsibility. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28 confirms these points. That's the points stressed in today's reference verses. John further links this point to the assurance that comes from living out our faith in deed and in truth in verse 18. In other words, John links confidence and obedience. Obedience doesn't increase our confidence, rather it confirms it. 
the reverse is sometimes easier to understand. We lose confidence when we try to hide our disobedience. So John encourages us that our righteous actions can assure us that they really do belong to the truth. But even when this isn't the case, John reminds us that God is greater than our hearts and knows our true status as his children. Because we are his children, we have confidence before him. And as his children, we long to obey him. John then issues two commands that summarize his major points. To fully believe in Jesus Christ, allowing us to love one another. The ultimate assurance that we know the truth, however, comes from the witness of the Spirit, verse 24. This important topic will be part of our focus for the next few days. The devotional thoughts for the day, the first is entitled, The Measure of a Man. Most of us would have a Bible character we would most like to copy. Chances are, most of us would say Paul from the New Testament. Those of us who would look into the Old Testament would probably say David, Solomon or Moses. Maybe even Jonathan, Saul's son. As a matter of biblical principles, we should be an amalgamation of all that is good from all the characters of the Bible. Then we would be much more like Jesus, wouldn't we? As much as we would like to believe that we may have some of the attributes of the men or women of faith, it is more likely that we fail on the above. I'm not saying that we don't have any of the good traits of the men or women of faith in the Bible. To the contrary, we do. What I'm saying is that in general, everyday living and in our walk with the Lord, we most often reflect the life of Jonah. What? But you say, I'm not like Jonah. Let me ask you this. How many times have you found an excuse to not go to an outreach? How many times have you found an excuse to not pray and not read the Bible? How many times have you found an excuse to not offer assistance to the weak when you could have really gone and done those things? Think hard and truthfully. How many times have you resented the simplicity of forgiveness in those who appear to abuse the Lord but repent when threatened? Jonah resented the ease with which God would forgive them. That's the main reason he held back. This is just a little provocation to motivate you to think seriously about this point. We would all like to be a hero type and that's why we choose the good guys. In reality, we are just everyday people trying to do extraordinary things. It's easy for our natural mind to make assumptions and judgments, but we need to let the power of God have its free way with us. Don't forget that Jonah actually did what he was asked and a city repented. Great things can come from your walk with the Lord. Be yourself, be honest, and look for the fruit of the Spirit by using the gifts the Lord has given you. Let God have his way with you. The second uh, uh, devotional thought for today is entitled God's Eternal Ordinances. And the scripture comes from Jeremiah chapter 31 and verses 35 and 36. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and the stars for light by night, which divideth the sea, when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. God rules over everything, and no one can change what he has decided. He has decided to choose, bless, and use the people of Israel for his purposes. For thousands of years, Gentiles have raged against Israel and this continues today. People do not understand or choose not to accept that this destructive tendency towards Israel in reality is hatred and revolt against God. God made the people of Israel to be a touchstone, a checkpoint 
from which we can evaluate the situation in the Gentile world. Through his eternal covenant, God has promised to hold his hand over Israel. Jeremiah says that at creation, God ordered the sun, the moon and the stars. Not until these ordinances cease to function, which probably will not happen until Jesus returns, will Israel cease to be a nation before the Lord. Is the sun up today? Does night follow day? In that case, God still holds his hand over his chosen people. Some people say that Israel is rejected. Is this true? In Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 37 we read, If heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says the Lord. In other words, God will never reject his people. He has an eternal covenant with them. In Jeremiah 31 again in chapter th in verse 3 we read, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you. God is faithful, consistent, steadfast and persistent. The people of Israel represent mankind both in their obedience and their disobedience. Modern Israel is much more than the Jews who dwell in the Middle East. The people of Israel also include the scattered tribes that we find in the USA, Great Britain and in other places throughout the world. When we read about their faith, we read about our own. When we read about their backsliding, we read about our own. When we read about their restoration, we read about our own. God's ordinances are alive and well and equally applied today, just like they did any time in Israel's history. And God now offers the Holy Ghost to all who will receive it. The facts of the day. Earth is slowing down. In a few million years, there won't be a leap year. <laughs> all the women won't be able to propose. The tale of the Great Comet of 1843 was 330 million kilometres long. It will come back in 2356. Hmm, probably won't bother many of us. A couple of lighter moments for the day. An American uh, businessman was being shown a big Soviet sign factory. We turn about 500 signs a week out, proudly said the Russian. And when business demands it, we can step it up to 2,000 signs a week. Wow, that's amazing, said the visitor. What's the most popular po sign that you turn out? Elevators not running, was the answer. <laughs> uh, the uh, prosecutor in a court case cautioned the witness to remember that she was under oath. And the lawyer then asked, and how old are you? 29 and some months, she replied. The lawyer looked a bit stunned and then said, how many months? 296. <laughs> The closing thought for today, a truly wise man will learn from another man's mistake. Be blessed by uh, what we've uh, talked about today. Have a wonderful day. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye for now.